What's up, guys and girls? Um, we received this logo from one of our users, and I wanted to show you real quick how to deal with an issue where you have multiple colors or or grayscale using Lightburn's trace feature, and how to to really take something that that some people struggle with, like something like this that won't trace perfectly the first time, and and how to make it work really well and easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm running a Mac. Um, you guys just do the conversion for uh, keystrokes um, for those of you that use BC. I'm sorry. Um, I hit option T and that brings up my trace window and I'm going to fade my image so I can see exactly what it's outlining. So in this we are missing the blade of grass completely, and that is fine. In fact, that actually makes it a lot easier to do what I want to do um, to make this logo appear kind of like it does in color. Okay, so I'm going to play with my threshold just a little bit to get the cleanest lines I can. And sometimes that's not easy, but we're going to do our best. Okay, those seem clean. Um, of course, if you can, stuff like like this, the, the text down below, the phone number, if you can find out what they used for the font, try to grab that. The most important thing for, for you to grab from a trace is going to be their logo, something that you can't easily replicate. Um, so I'm happy with that. So now, of course, what's this going to look like? Let's change it to black. that and we have to separate it and get rid of the outside line otherwise it's going to completely change what this logo is going to engrave like so real quick we'll do a preview and obviously that doesn't work it just looks like it just went through fruit ninja and uh, that's not what it looks like so what I'll, I'll do is I'll go in and I will do a secondary trace. <clears throat> and now I'm going to adjust it so I'm only picking out the threshold or a cutoff um, of the grays. So I'm trying to get just this darker gray. And if I can pull that off, that would be wonderful. And I bet you I can get really darn close All right, so now, for the most part, I only have the blade of grass. I have a lot of extra stuff over here, and you could easily get rid of that by saying, I only want to trace within this box. And now, I still have some pieces I'm going to have to get rid of, but it's a lot easier than getting rid of everything. Okay, so as you can see, we have a whole bunch of fragments. I'm going to leave this over to the side here so we can make sure that we match it up correctly. Um, so as you can see, we have a whole bunch of blinking dots. I will ungroup. I will use my left to right selection tool. This way it's only grabbing completed objects within the confines of the red box. I will hit delete. And again, on this side, delete. Um, I don't want to go the opposite way. If I go right to left, using the confines of the green box, it's going to select anything it overlaps, including the blade of grass, which we don't want. So we can do to right here, as long as it's not touching, or yeah, as long as it's not completely encompassed within that red box, it won't select it. All right. So now we have our blade of grass, and I can bring it down here. Um, I can use the snapping tool. This way it snaps right to that part. Um, it is a blade of grass, uh, but in their logo, it is not all jagged like that. It is nice and smooth, minus the pixelation. So what I would typically do is go ahead and do a node edit. And I can select multiple nodes at a time 
and I will hit the D key for delete and get rid of all those jagged parts. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, it, it doesn't look right. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and hit I for insert, and then I'm going to drag it up here, I for insert here, let's bring this up to here, and then we will manipulate the nodes ever so slightly so that so that we mimic in exactly the way it's supposed to be. Now in real time, this and I'm going a little bit slower so that you guys see exactly what I'm doing, but in real time, this shouldn't take you but a few minutes to uh, get somebody's logo up and ready and, and knowing how to do the, the double trace uh, will save you a little bit of time um, than trying to fight with it. Select these and get rid of them. Oops. Don't hit the delete key because it will delete everything. You want to hit the D key to erase the nodes that you're working with. And obviously those would be, be engraving just the way they look and that's not what we want. A little. So we could round this a little bit, and then we can round this one. And then we're going to have to add some more nodes just to bring this into line. Um, actually, no, we can probably use this one. There we go. Add that. Okay. So now that I have the blade of grass pretty well copied, Actually, want to bring this down a little bit as well. And I'm getting picky now, and that's fine. I mean, do it right. Your customer will thank you. Let's throw another node in there. I for insert. Adjust ever so slightly. Now that I have my blade of grass nice and straight and happy with it, I'm going to use it as a cutting tool. I'm actually going to use an outline of it as a cutting tool because I don't like these wonky lines here that were created from the trace. Um, I am going to kind of move, move them a little bit just so I make sure that I still have a lot of it showing. Let's move this down. Okay. And you know, we're trying to also keep in mind that we're not out to remake their logo or um, change it, change the looks of it. We're just trying to get the best representation of it as we possibly can for the engraving. Um, all right. So to use the blade of grass to cut out, I'm going to first need to make sure that the stuff that I want cut out is all grouped together. So I want to make sure that these pieces of the M and the pieces of the U are part of this group. So shift, select, select, select. All right, so that is now all selected, group them together. And I don't want my new blade of grass to be removed when I do when I use it for a cutting tool. So I'm actually going to use my offset. Offset distance, minimal, just outside of what you currently have. Um, so I just want to get just outside of that blade of grass. Okay, and it's already selected. Um, unfortunately, that's not the right order in which we need to use it to cut because we want these letters to be cut by this outline and there you go so now what we should have is a visible blade of grass but that's still not what i want um, and i want to give i want to give the customer some options so what i'm going to do is I'm going to do a line offset again, but inward, and not much, 
um, maybe about 0 0.02, and I'm working in inches. All right, and now we have an outlined blade of grass. If the customer would rather focus on the blade of grass rather than its uh, letters, then we can always do the exact same thing, run an inside offset, and now the blade of grass, oops, that's not what I wanted to hit, there we go. The blade of grass is going to be the focal point and the UML are secondary. Um, so we could always just copy, paste. We can select that inside offset, create another offset. Okay, and now we have two samples for the customers to look at, and they get to decide which way they want to go. And that's how I typically will do something that is grayscale like this, that won't trace in one shot. I will do multi-traces. Um, another thing that I can do is go into Photoshop um, and do a color change and I can go through that at a later date but there you go guys that's how I would do a difficult or a stubborn grayscale image that needs to be uh, traced hope that helped you thanks